Bye guys, happy Friday. Hello. Woohoo, it's Friday. I swear, it's been a crazy week, right? I'm happy We've it's been Friday. driving, we've been flying, everybody's doing stuff, it's just nuts. But it's Friday and we're here. All and good, all good. I know, so I've had so many requests lately to do pairings with the bobby bag. And I thought what was so fun was to show you how you can see the versatility of this bag. Cause some people are like, well, it's a big bag, but it's not. Because what happens is I use this sometimes as a work bag, but then many times I use it just as a small bag where I just put my personal belongings in here. So right now there's some paper stuff in here because it's in the store, but I just think it's like, cause mine, I have the denim one and I just sometimes will just put in like two or three days. So some, I had, while I was traveling. So I just put my, um, uh, what you call it, sling bag in there. So sling bag can have all your stuff. And then look, so this is just, see how small the bag can get. And right now I've got all this stuff hanging. And then you could use it as a crossbody and see it becomes like a little smaller, right? And then once you have all your computer right, and everything in here. inside already. Yeah, wow. is that crazy? It's just a sling and it just gets smaller. So it's a really crazy, awesome bag for versatility. It could be small, it could be big take to lunch. Um, I was playing with different straps. So you could put like a shoulder strap on it, which is kind of nice. Or you could have it as a crossbody, which I love. I love my crossbodies a little bit shorter than everybody else does it, but you can do it whichever length you want. So look, it's like, it all looks kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of like how it's kind of floppy and, and then it gets structured when you put stuff in there. So it's just like, it's a good it's slouch. Like a, it's a good slouch. It's actually super cool looking. And then look, this is what it looks like when it's carried. It looks like this when you've got like a, you know, acrylic on there. And what's great is I was just playing with the different colors. I mean, it's just so fun in the summer. You could pop pink on there. I was going to play with the orange because I love orange with caramel suede. I think that looks really pretty. And then you could use like a great neutral like this guy, the stripe guy. Or you can do the opposite where you can use a tortoise, which is like a more of a neutral or just butterscotch one and then you pop color onto it which is so you could do the opposite either do a non-color and then do stripes and fun stuff or you could do a color and then a neutral which is kind of fun and I love having the option of having a shoulder strap and a crossbody because then you could do so much stuff with it so I think this is great and I just love how they look so this is if you have any other questions on how you want it to look, tell me and I could just definitely pair these for you. So this is the caramel suede, the butterscotch, and the denim are here. I don't know where the camo went. I think it's inside. So awesome. And I just love it. So my whole thing is like pair it with a, a fun one if you want or you don't want and just do a great crossbody. And or else you just carry it. You know, I'm a big carry. Like I, I'm probably the last person on earth who still carries their bag like a handbag. I just love doing that. I don't know why. And I like carrying Feels it right. like this, yeah. but I do love having a strap on it just in case when I'm running through something and I need to have my shoulder hands free. So it's just, it's good. So other question that I had when we were not here is this question of butterscotch. Butterscotch is our most popular leather that we have online. And people get a little bit like, well, sometimes they're different colors. They are because every batch of leather we get, they're different. And this is a, what we call um, a nude color leather. So it gets darker with time. And you can see like sometimes when it gets, it, they're just different variation and different shades, but they're all in the same family of a butterscotch. And it's just a great neutral to have. So you can see like when it first starts, Sometimes um, the ones you get may be a little bit more nude. And then through time, like for example, this Mimi bag, which has um, been here in the sun a little bit. And as you get using it, it gets a little darker. So you can see how this is kind of the different variation and the different shades. And I think that's the beauty of when you use a leather like this. And I, I think people get scared by it because you're so used to getting these leather bags that are like uniform. all the same and all uniform. Um, we don't really do that here. And that's the problem because all of our bags are made in batches. So based on what batch it is, you may get a color variation, but they're all in the same tone. Each has a unique personality, but yeah. they're all part of the same family. Yeah, and then on some of the nude ones, there might be a little bit of a little, um, you know, like a little stretch mark, like here. Like I mean, look, there's like four options right now. There's this one, these three all... in front of you and that one also, like they're Correct. all just, Correct, but they're all in the same family. And then as they get used, they all become 
a shade. This is you another know. variation is yeah. to be expected. Yes, and I think what's beautiful about it is just like having the pebbling and just a little bit of the characteristics of a cow, you know, like, and that's where Matt and I, we went, and sometimes when we go to see the tanneries and all the leathers are spread out, you, it's obvious, like you see it where, oh, that's where the neck is, oh, oh, you know, like sometimes I'm like, what happened to the side of this one, you know, and it's all marked up and they're like, well, sometimes they're itchy and they're scratching themselves against the wire fence. So you see like a whole side of the leather, and it's usually on the bottom where it's like, okay, that, that cow's been scratching itself. Or you'll see little bites, you know, but that comes from little fly or tick bites, or not tick bites, uh, fly bites. Character. Yeah, but it gets cut out, but I'm just saying sometimes you might see a little, it's like our skin, okay? Like it's not perfect unless you photoshopped everything. And I think, and I love, I love, the one thing I love is like, this is our most popular leather, you know? That means you guys are so cool where I think you guys grasp this concept or really, you know, love this concept like we do of something natural. It tells a story. Yeah, and then it's yours. And when you use it, it becomes your story and it goes through, you know, the oils that have been on your hands, sometimes on there, or you've carried it a lot so it's dark, it gets darker and the characteristics come out and it's your story. And I think that's what's so cool about it. So I, I'm really happy that um, a couple people have asked for me to show the different shades and what happens through time. And you can see like this guy's been in the sun a little bit, so he gets a little darker. And so that's why sometimes when you see the photos online and people carrying them, it does get confusing. Like, well, why is her so dark? And then I got mine and it looks like this. It's all going to become a shade of this. And I think that's what's beautiful. And then based on what lot you got, sometimes the shades are a little darker than the other ones, but they're all within the butterscotch realm. And I think it is just a, spectacular and beautiful leather i really it is my favorite too i love it and i love how it's a great great canvas that goes with everything and i think that's really important so anyways that's what i wanted to show and i'm really excited about it so enough of the product matt and i tried an ice bath this week and thank you uncle mario thank you uncle mario and ellen and they like us have always been curious about ice baths oh and this Taylor. Hey, Taylor. Hi. Um, so, um, what was I going to say? So, we've been curious, and I have been doing um, cold showers for a very long time. I would say, like, for the last two years, I always, at the end of my showers, I do a two-minute, just one time a day. Um, now that I know that it, you only need 11 minutes a week, I'm like, hmm. Because sometimes it's my most least favorite thing to do. Like, oh, my God, I have to do the cold shower. So, anyways, but I do love it. Two minutes a day, right? So one very interesting fun fact I learned, first of all, let's just talk about it. Matt and I did it and it was very cold, right Matt? Uncle Mario had it all set up. He yeah. had like bowl, like he went out and got bags of ice. Yes. Filled this up. Bags, like 12 bags of ice. Like He's already crazy. disciplined. He's doing it at part of his workout at six in the right. morning every day. So this is what's going on. So we're, we've all, both families have been interested. He came in at it independently. Idea. Like we, I, right. we went down there. He's like, Hey, are you into this thing? I was like, actually. Yeah. And so what's going on is to get a real one, it's a big investment. So I think what's going on is like, okay, are we doing this long enough to invest in this thing? Cause it is very good for your health. And I think mentally, there's three things that happens with this and we'll talk about it. But first we just have to know if we're gonna do it. So I think Ellen, my sister is also the same, like I'm not bringing this huge machine into the house if no one's gonna use it. So they did sort of a, a beginner's one where it's like a blow up almost thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny looking. And then poor Mario has to go get ice it's every like day. It's like a tiny, tiny version of an above, above ground pool. It it's like a no, giant. No, it's tiny. It's like a little, it's almost like the size of a 55 gallon drum kind of thing. Yeah, or yeah. like, you know, when you go to the games and there's that giant Gatorade ice bucket, it's kind of like as big as that. Anyways. Big enough that you a get in like this. four person can fit in. Yes. Yeah. And then about 12 packs of ice is what you need, which is a lot of work every day to go get 12 packs of ice at 7-Eleven or yeah. wherever, right? Proof of concept. Proof of concept. So. If you do get a real one, it's basically like you turn a dial and it gets to the temperature that you need it to be and you get it in. So it's much better. And the water is distilled and blah, blah, blah. So we'll get to that when we're and no sure ice that touching you. there's no ice touching you because ice is miserable <laughs> when it touches. It hurts, right? So I think we all tried three minutes was the first day. And we got in, we did three minutes and that was good. And then of course the younger kids were like, 
I think I could do longer. And then of course, then we get into the, our family's very competitive by nature. And so of course everyone's smack talking and like, we need to do five minutes, 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Like don't do 10 minutes. Like think you're going to start getting frostbite. So anyway, so we, we limited it to six minutes, right? Cause we're like, we don't want this to be dangerous. So Mario and Joe did five. I did four. Mario did 5.15. 5.15, sorry, yeah. 5.15. Because you know what? Uh, one second counts when you're freezing like that, it does. <laughs> so I got to 4.30, but what happened was I was fully in like shoulders down, but I had my hands sort of exposed. So they're like, no, no, you need to put your hands in. And I was like, oh my God. Once the hands went Sounds in. Sounds like a minor difference. It really hurts. The hands, I don't know. Well, now we know why. So today I went and did a deep dive into Dr. Huberman. And there's a couple things I've learned. That's why, why would you even do this? Why do you subject yourself to such a thing? Why do I do half the things I do? Because now this is another addition I need to add if you get that machine, right? Oh my God. So top three <laughs> things that are takeaways. Just a little preview though. Okay. Matt, uh, tell how me how you, you feel? felt. How did you feel? Well, how after? did you feel? I felt great. After. Matt did get ice blocks inside his pants. That was ridiculous. That was <laughs> Like that was not comfortable. Everywhere. Yeah, that. it was not comfortable. I mean... And your your body turned really red. It was, you know, it's certainly not enjoyable while you're doing it. But it's, right. like, euphoric's too strong a word, but it's very... I, we described it as, you know, being the equivalent awake of having, like, four shots of espresso with no jitter. For a while, all day. For, like, it would taper... Yeah, it was, like, immediately after you feel great. And it's, like, for several hours yeah. after. Yeah. And, and the other thing was I thought I would be really cold, like like that. But what was weird was I wasn't shivering when I got out. No. I do, I shiver more when I'm in the shower doing the ice cold shower. But yeah. I don't know why. I have no idea. It's got to be something We have our physical. theories, like, because yeah. we weren't moving around in it. So it, it allows us very, very well, thin I layer of water I thought you had to stay still up. and breathe. Well, we didn't know. Well, it's But a then good you thing. said when you were listening to Hoover, he said it's important. It maximizes the benefit if you move around. That's yes, because it, 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 it put through. Basically, this is what happens. It's three things that are good. Mentally, it's very, very good if you're a very anxious person. It really teaches you how to calm your mind because you kind of have to in order to stay. It's fight or flight, right? Like, if you decide to fight and you go crazy, you're not going to survive. It's just basic, right? So, fight or flight. So, you learn how to really, when you're in an adverse situation, bring it down a notch and how to be very calm in that situation and think clearly. So I think it trains your body and your mind to do that. So that's one good benefit. The other benefit we like is uh, for metabolism, right? So what happens is if you consistently do this, it converts a lot of your fat cells, which are usually white and that's used for energy, but it also turns into fat if you don't expend it. So I didn't know this and I just learned this this morning is when you're submerging yourself in this ice water, it converts some of these white fat cells into brown or even a yellowish color. But brown is optimal, and that's because, I didn't know this either, there's a huge amount of mitochondria. And so what happens cellularly, what happens, and I can't remember all these different names for the different synapses that happen, but basically it converts the white blood cells into these brown blood cells when you put yourself in this situation consistently. So having these brown blood cells, uh, fat cells, Matt, what does it do? I think it's it, just, I didn't have one of that episode yet, but I think it, uh, one of the benefits, whether or not it's directly from the brown fat is yeah. like you said, increased metabolism. Yeah. yeah. And what's interesting is they said babies and also um, kids who are younger, that's why they could go outside when they're so freezing and you're like, why are you not? Layers. They have, and so as you get older and older, you lose it, but like kids have it around like certain parts of their bodies and it's the brown fat cells. So the brown fat cells is great. Yeah, let's both fully listen to that episode and report more. So that's a good thing. And then the last thing is, so you've got the mental issues that are um, great for for the conversion of white blood uh, fat cells to brown. And then the last thing is, there was one last thing, and now I can't remember because I had it in my brain and I can't remember. But there's one more really great thing that happens when you, um, well, the fight or flight. I think that's a great thing. And oh, and what was interesting is like he did say how to like we were doing it by time and he came up with this concept of doing it by walls. So like having walls that you climb over and he suggests three walls. So even by just getting into the ice is one wall. So it's facing all these fears. And what happens is when you have these walls that you try to climb over, it teaches you again when you're in a very stressful situation how to react 
to that situation. And I think that's what's great about flailing around sometimes when you're in the ice because I think it teaches your body how to then how to calm your mind and warm yourself up and not freak out and get it get out. So that was interesting. So today when I did my um, shower, I made sure the hand, palms were under the ice, the really yeah. cold water, and I started moving around more because they usually just you sit said there. It was different, right? It was way colder. Like I was shivering. I was so cold. And usually I'm not that cold when I get out. And I made sure I put my whole head underneath and my face, which is also ladies good for your face. Because I also watch these crazy, what's good for your face? And to do a warm, like wash your face with warm water and then cold, apparently is really good for it. But of course, um, to, I went to Ellen's club and I'm like, I need to do something about my face. One of the servers at work there was like, is that your mother to my sister? And I was like, dude, I work really hard so to maintain ridiculous. this situation here. And I was like, um, my, I'm like her mother? That's insane. I'm only two years older than my sister. Anyways, Ellen's been doing some good stuff to her face. Oh my goodness. So I'm like, I'm looking at Dr. Jacob. I'm like, do I need a neck lift? Or do I need to fill this part in? Anyways, we were laughing. I was like, maybe I need to do some fillers around these brown lines. Whatever, I don't care. It's just really that funny. That person was crazy. And she asked like three times, yeah. man. And she's like, because I looked at her funny. Like, why and would she someone goes, in the first place even say that? She's nuts. And she's like, oh, it's so nice that you brought your mother. I was like, I'm not her mother. Anyways, it was really funny. I was like, dude, um, whatever. It's just funny. And I'm like, okay, what else do I need to do now? This is ridiculous. So I, I am now um, icing my face. <laughs> oh my God. That person's crazy. I don't. I don't agree with anything. Oh my god, that. thanks Matt. That's too nice, but I think no, I think it's true. also the gray hairs. I need it's to get this gray. situation. Well, it's just crazy. I know, but it's down here because I had my hair pulled back and when I have it pulled back it's fully gray. Alright. Whatever, who cares? But it is like you have to embrace your grays. Because I that's the other thing. Like some women look amazing with their gray hair. I'm not there yet. I'm not I'm not fully on board with the grays. What do you think, Matt? Dude, I'm like fully gray. I have no choice. Well, men can't really. Men, see, this is what the difference is between men and women. Like, if you went and dyed your hair, it'd be really weird. Yeah. Can you imagine you came back, you're all blonde? <laughs> That's just or like you could. Or like Seth <laughs> Rogen in, uh, in Platonic. Yeah. Oh my God. Or the, the craziest when they have really, like, men dye their Tips. hair really brown. Yeah, when it's too dark. That's really weird yeah. too. Or like they have mustaches and then, like, it's just, it's just too weird. Yeah, men can't dye their hair. I yeah. think that's bizarre. Or, or for now, the I'm just going with the flow. Go with the flow. It's fine. So anyhow, that's what's going on. Um, we'll report back more about the um, ice baths, and I'll show you. But the little tub. I mean, we had 12 packs of ice in there, in addition to water. I think there's water, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. It was. It was not warm. And then, of course, the boys had to really get into it with who can stay in longer. And then while they were in there, they dumped a pack of ice on um, Uncle Mario. That was pretty intense. That was rough. Yeah. The the. I think the the palms is the worst. Yeah, the, the hands. wrists and the palms. Yeah, and your feet. Your feet. The first time I was in there, it started to hurt really bad. Anyways, all right, we'll do. We'll we'll discuss that some more. And if anybody has done ice baths, which I know some people have, and they wrote me yesterday, they said that putting your face in was the best part in the end. Yeah, it actually felt good. I was telling you. Yeah, they're like, you didn't do the best part. I thought I it like, would oh. be worse. It actually feels great. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, two people said that was the best part. I don't know why. Your face. I, that was a real surprise. And I love how um, there are people out there who have have been doing this. Oh, tell us your story. Yeah, tell us your story. Yeah, we'll tell us what machine you're using. I want to know. Because yeah, we're trying to look at all the different machines. Yeah, yeah, and the best is to do this is like next level if you do the ice bath and then you do the um, red infrared sauna and you yeah, go from both um, one to one and that's supposed to be fantastic so but we'll just start with the ice one first. thing at a time yeah anyways all right we'll see you guys on monday and have a great weekend but please tell us if you've been ice bathing because i we're really matt and i are really curious all right and we'll see you next week bye guys